everyone, it's Mary. Today I thought I'd film a non-fiction November TBR uh, and talk about the books that I own, all the non-fiction books that I uh, own that I have not read. Because I remember I um, uploaded a, a book haul, I think, I don't know how many months ago now, but I never finished. I was It was a part one of a book haul that I never finished and I, now it's just, it, so much time has passed that I don't even remember which books I never hauled on this channel, which books I talked about already, maybe some of them I uh, even read. So there's no point in, in, in uh, continuing the filming of that part, that, that um, haul that was in parts. And since I grouped all my non-fiction books, all my un unread un non-fiction books, I thought this was the perfect time to be talking about them. And also this year I will be participating, I believe I participated last year as well, um, but I will be participating in non-fiction November. I have to say that my non-fiction reading I think is uh, pretty good in terms of, of quantity. I think it might be, I'm not sure, but I think it's half and half. Like I read half non-fiction, half fiction, which is something that was not true before joining booktube i don't i think of course booktube uh, plays a part in this because there are so many great non-fiction channels and um so many non-fiction recommendations but it was also that i like becoming an adult i would say um the, the more i grow up the more i'm drawn to non-fiction books um so yeah this event is hosted by olive at a, a book called olive um and i'm gonna link her to her channel down below but i believe she has um i believe she's co-hosting maybe somebody else is helping her even on booktube i'm not sure though but i'm gonna leave links and um, there's also a challenge on instagram um, which I know even Natalie is a part of over at uh, A Curious Reader and yeah, I'm just gonna leave links to everything that I talk about. As I was saying, I feel like the non-fiction reading I do is, is um, pretty decent, um, but what I do is I tend to read uh, books about child, ch children and about parenting a lot, which is something that I will try and avoid for this month just to shake things up a little bit. I will have like a couple of them uh, on the on the, the reading uh, sort of pile because I, I am currently reading, I'm always currently reading um, a book about parenting or education or children. So yeah, um, but I'll try and, you know, focus on something else. So I'll try and challenge myself and read the f four books to fulfill the four prompts uh, for, for this year's challenge. Um, I don't know if I can manage to read four books uh, this month because every month is a surprise <laughs> but I feel like the last few months I managed to read quite um, a lot and I don't have um, basically anything going at the moment aside from those books that I talked about already so let's just dive into the video because I have a lot of books to talk about and I am afraid this is gonna be too long so the four words um, first one is gonna be time and for time, I chose um, Another Day in the Death of America by Gary Young. This book was very popular, I think, when I first started book two, probably. Um, but I only just recently acquired it. It was on my, it has been on my wish list forever. And it just, the author picked a random day, uh, which I think it's um, in 2013. Um, yes, 23rd. 3rd of November of 2013 and randomly just chose a day and saw that um, 10 kids or teens were killed by gun violence um, during this day and every day basically in America this happens. He just tells the stories of these 10 kids each chapter for each kid um, speaking to their families just knowing a little bit more about their lives because it's not something that's talked a lot about. Um, it's just, I mean, it's just the normalcy uh, in the US and I think this is very, uh, it's gonna be very um, hard to read but also very, very um, interesting and yes, um, it's a high, it's highly recommended so I hope I'm going to enjoy this one. Next word is uh, movement and for movement I have The Stopping Places, A Journey Through Gypsy Britain by Damien Lebas and 
Um, I heard this book, I think I heard for the first time of this book from Mel over at Mel's Bookland, Bookland Adventures and she just raved so much about this, it was like an instant, uh, okay I need to read this one and it talks about the author uh, as he um, traces back his um, past and his tradition and the tradition of his people. He's of, of Romani descent and he talks about he talks with his um, great yeah, great grandmother. Um, she speaks to him in Romani and he just decides to uh, to uh, start a journey to see the places that um, nobody would know about if, if you know if you're not uh, aroma you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to find this this sort of um, roots and um, and different different places so uh, this sounds so fascinating and interesting um, and uh, yeah I, I just think I'm going to really enjoy this one Jesus my hair is I, I, I swear my hair is getting crazier uh, each video that I film this is why like since since uh, the lockdown I haven't been what was that? I haven't been going to a hairdresser or, or anything like that. My fringe, my my fringe is um, my my mother-in-law cuts my fringe, and I'm so happy about it. I don't think I've ever I'm ever gonna visit a hairdresser again, but I probably should because my hair looks terrible. Back to the books. Um, for the world, for the word buzz, I have educated by Tara West over because this was such a buzzy book. Uh, I think a couple of years ago now. I'm always late to the party, as you might have noticed with my channel. But I don't mind. I mean, once the buzz, sometimes it's even better to wait a little bit because uh, it happens that I hear a book talked about a lot and then maybe I buy it because it's, I feel like it's gonna be amazing and then the more time it passes the more the uh, more like reviews come out and maybe it's not that good as it sounded and all that jazz so sometimes waiting is uh, is I think is apt but this time I feel like this is still a book that is very much loved and it's the story of um, Tara um, this is her memoir actually growing up without a birth certificate without going to school without going to the hospital because their, her par parents just didn't believe in those institutions and they kept her and her brother brothers um secluded basically from the, the real world and she actually endures even um violence uh both by her uh father and her brother and she flees uh from home when she's 16 or 17 um 16 and then gets yeah, an education and how this really changed her life so I, I really hope this one is gonna be a good one um as it sounds so promising Next for discovery, I have Reading the Rocks by Brenda Maddox, and this one um, is uh, how Victorian geologists discovered the secret of life. How these um, array of people, of clergymen, of academics, of women, actually fostered the birth of geology, and it sounds so interesting. I love fossils. Um, this sounds so nerdy as I was saying it but yeah I think this one is gonna be good it's like a um, biography of, of this group uh, of, of people and also you know a, an account a, a historical account of, of the events that unfolded so this one that's it for my um, for my you know TBR uh, now let's dive into all of my unread books. This this uh, video is gonna be so long. I I already hate it. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll we'll start from the oldest one I think, which is this chunker here that I'm just gonna hold briefly because I'll put the English ver original version because I believe it was written in English originally, um, even though the author is Chinese and it is uh, Wild Swans by Yong Chang and. I think I own this book since 2010. I could be wrong, but I mean, it's been such a long time. As it says, the story of three women of China. So the author, her mother and her grandmother. I was recommended this book uh, because I wanted to know more about China in general. And this was supposed, this is supposed to be very like informative uh, in terms of history, but also very personal because it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's, it's a biography 
a memoir, I would say. I, I don't know how to call it, but a, like a family um, sort of memoir. Yeah, it's supposed to be really good. Uh, I'll just try and be brief about every book that I, that I mentioned, otherwise it's gonna go on forever. Then we've got um, Maureen Corrigan's So We Read On, How the Great Gatsby Came to be and why it endures. So as you might know, I love The Great Gatsby. Um, this year I read it for the fourth time. I, I decided that I want to read it each August just because it's a perfect time to be reading it and I just, it's a book that brings me a lot of comfort uh, as a read and it's just, it's good. It's so good. And um, so I wanted to know a little bit more about it and about the author as well and this it's very promising. Olive over at Book Olive really recommends this book if you like and enjoy The Great Gatsby. So sooner or later I will, I will try and read this like alongside The Great Gatsby maybe next year. Then we've got another big one which is um, Romantic Outlaws, The Extraordinary Lives of Mary Wollstonecraft and Mary Shelley by Charlotte uh, Gordon. Uh, this, I'm a bit intimidated, I have to say, by the length of it, but I know Natalie over at um, A Curious Reader loves this book, loves this book, and it's the, the biography of, um, as it says, uh, Mary Wollstonecraft and Mary Shelley, Mary Shelley being the author of Frankenstein, that I never read, so I, I'm not sure whether I want to read this one first and then read Frankenstein, or the other way around, and Mary Wollstonecraft was her mother. And the um, uh, sad thing uh, about this relationship is that they actually never met, um, but they did have things in common. And this book explores uh, basically their lives, and it sounds very good, but again, very intimidating. I hope I can get to this one uh, at some point. Then we've got another book that has been sitting on my shelves for a long time, which is I Know What the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. This was a very popular, I think, when I first started booktube. It's a, it's a, um, uh, a memoir, and this is actually the first part. I don't know about the second part, because I, I don't think I've ever heard I don't think I've heard a lot of people talk about the second part of this book. I don't even know what, what um, how it's called. Um, but again, it's a, it's a biography of the author growing up and um, being, uh, feeling it abandoned by her, uh, her mother and just because she's been brought up by her um, grandmother. And yeah, it just explores her life and everybody raves about this one. So I hope it's gonna be a good one. Then we've got a very pretty book, but I, I don't know how how much meat there is to it, uh, and it's called Practical Magic, A Beginner's Guide to Crystals, Horoscopes, Psychics and Spells by Nikki van der Kar. Um, illustrations by Katie Vernon. It's actually... Um, I wish that like there was a similar book, because I love witchy stuff, um, but I wish there was like a similar book that was more in-depth, because this one is very like surface level, it's just pretty, um, that's what it is. It has a lot of illustrations, uh, and um, it's just, I mean, it's just pretty, it's a good thing, it's a good book to own, uh, but I actually feel like I would love to have like a more a more specific book about this topic, so if you have any recommendations actually please write in the comments down below. Then we've got A Life's Work by Rachel Cusk. This again is a very buzzy author um, because I heard her talked a lot uh, on booktube, especially this last, this past like year, and she wrote quite a lot of books, um, not all non-fiction, she wrote fiction as well, but I felt like the first book that I wanted to check out by her was this one, because this is an account on uh, her um, motherhood, her early motherhood, which is an, a topic that interests me like immensely, so yeah, I cannot wait to get to this one actually, because I feel like it's if, if she is as good as everybody says, um, especially with this kind of topic, I feel like it's the perfect combination for me. So I hope I'm going to enjoy this one. Then we have A Gentleman Jack, a biography of Anne Lister by Angela Stido. Angela Stido. I hope I pronounced the last name correctly. This, first of all, I hate this cover. I absolutely loathe covers like from TV shows and movies. Um, I was, it was not the cover that I was that I thought I was purchasing, but anyway, um, I heard Simon over at Savage Reads rave about this book, 
I got it like straight away. And then I read other reviews that really <laughs> were not as kind as he was. Uh, so I'm kind of not not that eager to get to this now. Uh, but it's the bio biography of Anne Lister, who was a um, Regency landowner. She was a traveler. She was a lesbian, and that's basically this is uh, the story of her life, which sounds very interesting. Um, I heard it's not accurate. I heard the author just uh, didn't like stress on the right sort of details. Um, I don't know. I I'm surely I I am gonna check this out anyway. Um, but I have to admit that I'm not as pumped as I was when I first got it. Another one that's been sit sitting on my shelves since forever is Mermaids, uh, the myths, legends and lore by Sky Alexander. This, as it is as exactly as the title says, a book about mermaids and I do love mermaids um, and the book is just so beautiful. It's a naked hardback, it's greenish blue, I would say it's more green than blue but um, the insides are like this, and then the, the text is blue as well, blue-green as well. Oh no, bug, bug, bug! I hate silverfish. This sounds very, very fascinating, and I feel like I want to read this one during the summer though. Because um, you know, mermaids, the sea, and all that jazz. Now I've got a book that, for the life of me, I don't remember where I first heard about this book. I don't know who recommended this book. Or yeah, or where I heard about about it, uh, but it was on my wish list, and I think I got it as a gift from some of my uh, friends or relatives. I don't know why that was on my wish list, but it is an angel at my table by Janet Frame. It's an autobio, it's a an autobiography, and I don't I don't even know who she is, um, and it's a very big one, uh, but she was misdiagnosed with um, schizophrenia. She spent several years in psychiatric uh, institutions. She almost got a lobotomy and she managed managed to avoid it. Um, she's just, she's got an interesting life for sure. Next up is Border by Kapka Kasabova, A Journey to the Edge of Europe. And this sounds complicated, but also very, very interesting. It's also very hefty as a book, very, um, dense, I would say, in, in, the, in the text. The author explores a triple border there is through uh, between Bulgaria, Greece and Turkey and just the story, the history of it, um, back to the Ottoman Empire and, and, and she also explores the lives of the people that live there now and how uh, they are affected by the past um, and just what's happening in the present as well. It just sounds very specific and very, very interesting. Um, I hope it's not too hard to get through. That's just my uh, fear approaching this book. It sounds very like it's gonna go over my head. I hope not because geography is not my best. Um, I'm not very good at it, <laughs> but but this one sounds promising. Next up we have Childhood uh, by Tol Dittelsen, Dittelsen, um, the Copenhagen Trilogy. Uh, this I saw this book on Instagram and I was drawn to it by, by the cover because it looks so pretty, but um, I actually read, of course, what this one was about and it sounds so good. Um, it's basically the biography of, of, uh, of the author growing up. Of course, this first volume is about her childhood. Um, it basically sounds like a brilliant friend but in, in non-fiction form. So she grows up in Copenhagen um, and explores the relationship between her and a friend of, uh, another little girl, a friend of hers, uh, and how they get um, mixed up with um, adult sort of secrets and it just sounds so good. I cannot wait to dive into this one. I actually couldn't find the other two. I think there's three. Oh yeah, the Copenhagen Trilogy, so yeah. Um, I couldn't find the other two, like if they weren't available for me, not on Amazon, not on other, like, mm, on other sites. I need to look again, but yeah, I hope I can find them because I would, I wish I could read like all three of them, maybe, you know, back to back. Next up is The Salt, the, the Salt Path by Rainer Wynn. And um, 
I heard everybody rave about this book, so I was very eager to get it. This is a memoir of the author as her husband is diagnosed with a, with a terminal illness and they also um, lose their property, their home, their money basically, and they decide to hit the road and walk from Somerset to Dorset uh via Devon and Cornwall Cornwall and yeah this is basically their their story um and as I was saying I heard everybody rave about this one I bought it and then just recently I listened to um, um one of Mercedes from Mercedes Bookish Musings wrap-ups where she talks about this book and she absolutely bashes this uh in a way in which it just I don't I don't feel like I want to read this book anymore just because she talks about like the, the the reasoning behind this sort of decision that the author makes and how privileged they are and uh, yeah i will not dive into this because i don't know anything about this but yeah it's just i'm majorly put off now uh by by, by reading this book i still feel like i want to check this out and see for myself but for the reasons that that mercedes stated in her review i don't feel like this one is gonna appeal to me so yeah next up is uh, Cider with Rosie by Lori Lee and again this one was on my wish list and it has been there for a very long time I didn't even know this one was non-fiction when I got it and I just because again I got this one as a gift I read uh, you know the blurb and I was like wait this is non-fiction um, so I guess I'm gonna put it with the other non-fiction books that I own um, I don't mind actually I'm very interested in it it's supposed to be sort of a, a you know a modern classic and it's just a memoir of the author again living his childhood living his life in a village without electricity because the, the, yeah he lived his childhood was a long time ago i don't know the age uh, like uh, doo -doo -doo. he was born in 19 uh in 1914 so yeah uh as i said i love stories about childhoods in general so i hope this, you know, is, is as promising as it sounds. Next up, I have La Frantumaglia by Elena Ferrante. Um, as you might know, I fell in love with Elena Ferrante's uh, books. I only read the Neapolitan Quartet, uh, but I plan to read like every book that she ever published. Um, I still need to work on that because I don't own any other books uh, besides those and this one. I really just wanted to know more about her as an author, as a person, because she's so... Um, secretive about it and actually nobody knows anything about her and this book doesn't really give you like her her life or anything like that um it's not a biography by any means but it's a a collection of letters and writings of the author where she answers some questions that the um the people have um and i was just curious to know more about her personal details and life and just personal thoughts i would say i just want to know how much of her life is poured into her books I, su I suspect it's a lot and that's why she doesn't want really to to state it um, but as I was like approaching this book because I wanted to read it straight away as soon as I got it it um, it says in the first page that this is for uh, people that read um, troubled love and days uh, the days of abandonment both of which I did not read so I was like I don't want to spoil those books for me I'll just wait until I read all of her books and then get back to this one. Next up I have uh, a very big one and it is Walt Disney The Triumph of the American Imagination by Neil Gabler. Uh, this is a very big one and it's the biography of Walt Disney. I'm so eager to get to this one. I know Natalie again over at A Curious Reader loves, loved this book and she made me uh, like instantly go and, and uh, purchase it because I just want to to read it and actually know uh, a little bit more about him as a person, about his work, about how even, you know, growing up Disney was, you know, the Disney industry would say was very much part of my childhood as I think it is part of everybody's childhood that has like more or less the same age um, I, I, I have. So yeah, this one sounds like a great read. Another chunkster is uh, Nourishing Traditions. Uh, the cookbook that challenges politically correct nutrition and the diet dictocrats uh, by Sally Fallon. This, I feel like this one is pretty old. 
I could be wrong, but if you, if you see the author's picture there, yeah, I, I mean, no, I just want to check it out now. Oh, it's from 2001. Actually, I thought it was going to be even older than that. It uh, recalls uh, traditional cooking, ancient like preservation methods, um, a guide to like wise food choices. It sounded so interesting. At the same time, like I skimmed through it and I know it has some inaccuracies, um, especially regarding like breastfeeding, which is a topic that I know a lot about. And when I read that, it kind of I was a bit put off because I know that if like she can fool me on other sort of topics because I don't know everything about nutrition or cooking um, but she couldn't she can't fool me on breastfeeding uh, or other things that I know you know a lot about so I'm like I can't trust her because I can't trust her on breastfeeding and she like stated she states things in here as as if she was informed so I don't know I don't know it still sounds interesting and I'm obviously going at some point to check it out maybe you know, it's not a book that is to be read like all in one go. I feel like it's more of a, a book that you dip in and out of. Um, but yeah, uh, this one. Last unread non-fiction book that I own is The Soul of an Octopus by Cy Montgomery. A surprising exploration into the wonder of consciousness. This is highly recommended by everybody that has read it. It's a book about octopuses and about the author and her relationship with them and how she came to uh, actually wanting to know more about about them and I don't know anything about octopuses so this sounds like an interesting book um, and I hope it's gonna be as good as everybody says it is we're finished I feel I feel, I feel like this uh, has been going on since forever I was getting so much better with editing and with just uh, being quick with videos I don't think this time I managed it but I hope you enjoyed anyway let me know if you're participating in nonfiction November and also what you're gonna be reading and if you have of course any recommendations please uh, let's chat in the comments down below and I'll see you in my next video bye